19. We have a quorum. We've done the pledge. We need the approval of the minutes. We have two sets. Mr. President, one of those is a correction of a meeting that occurred in March. Yes, this would be the March 13, 2019, Danville Town Council meeting minutes. It has been revised. And then we have the uh, Danville Town Council meeting minutes of April 15, 2019. Take a motion to approve uh, separately, please, because one's a revision. I'll make a motion to approve the town council minutes, not the amendment, the other ones. Okay, April 15th. I'll make a motion to do that. Okay, we got a motion to approve the April 15th minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Approve. Uh, excuse me. Disapprove. Minutes pass. And now we have the uh, revised minutes of March 13th. Uh, I make a make a motion to approve the the advise uh, the revised minutes. Okay, we have a motion to approve the uh, minutes of March 13th that were revised. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes pass. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start off uh, with uh, announcement of job offer acceptance. Uh, Town Manager Morgan. Um, I guess it's my pleasure. I don't know if it'll be yours, but uh, I did accept your offer uh, for the position of Town Manager. I uh, appreciate it. I'm hoping I won't let you down. I'd also like to uh, inform the council and the audience that Lisa Ternay has accepted the offer of town planner. And Melin Heron, stand up, has accepted the offer of uh, office manager. Both of them started today. Oh, excellent. Welcome to Ward. Thank you. Okay, we have bid openings uh, for our waste department uh, project. President, uh, I assume Jimmy and Danny are here. Yeah. Um, we're opening uh, bids for materials for a project uh, for the water department. We have one bid. And this shouldn't take much of your time. It's EJ Prescott. 8309 West Washington Street, Indianapolis. I'm looking for their final bid, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <coughs> Got all their assets listed. Great. The bid is $200,270.59. $200,270.59. And this is for a uh, water main looping of 200 east from Main Street to Whisperwood subdivision. Yes, sir. It's an and that's a four, uh, approximately 4000 4, And that's a 12-inch main? like to refer this to uh, staff and to Banny to take a look at it and yeah. make sure that this meets their criteria and all the specifications that they have requested. Okay, absolutely. Do we have consensus? We'll send it to staff. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Annual operation report. Julie Cooney. Hi, Julie. <clears throat> Um, I'm here to present the annual operational report for local roads and streets and bridges um, that we have to submit to LTAP. Um, so I just need the town council president's signature on this original document, and then I can get this entered into their portal. That's all. Any Anything. questions? Um, thank you for sending us the instructions. I started reading the instructions. I'm going, I don't have to fill this out. <laughs> Um, 
But I did have one question. Okay. Uh, when we get to page eight, mm -hmm. uh, it talks about other funds. Uh, other funds, that would be the community crossings. Okay. Grants, that's what that is. And Jenny's, Jenny's looked at that, and she you has. and Jenny are in agreement that this is these numbers are solid and good? Yeah. They come right from Gateway, where she enters all her numbers. Okay. All right. Any questions for Julie? Where do these funds come from? The MBH and LRS, Local Road and Streets and the MBH. Quit using those acronyms. Oh, Tell Motor Vehicle Highway Fund <coughs> and Local Road and Street Fund, and then the Community Crossing. So area. these are provided by the county, the town, and the state? Yes. All right. Now, aside from my signature, do you need consensus from the council? Um, that would be fine. Any other questions? All right. What's well, the pleasure of the council? Shall I sign this? Chris? Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Bridge. Uh, send it on. We'll get our money. <coughs> or we'll... Stay right here, then I'll sign it. Thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, capital expenditure request, Jimmy Russell. Uh, I got a capital expense request uh, requesting a, a new handheld device. Uh, currently, our meter reading that we have, we have handheld uh, meter reading uh, devices that we use. Uh, currently, I uh, got information that they're getting outdated and not going to be supported anymore. Uh, these current handhelds are 10 years old that we have, and then we're seeking to upgrade and trade them in and get new handheld. What I plan on doing is instead of buying all three at once, buy one, we get used to it, how it operates, and then phase the other ones in over two or three months per, per device. That way, like getting a new computer, everybody gets them, then all of a sudden, you gotta learn on all of them. So this way, it gives us the opportunity to work the bugs out, and uh, once we get that in, and, and then work for it a couple months, and see about getting another one, slowly upgrade these systems. Is there going to be any problem between uh, an interface with uh, like using an old one and reading the meter and then using a new no, one? No, no, no. It's just all, everything's all newer software capabilities and like new computers. Everything should transfer over and then it uh, uh, is able to read the new newer stuff that's out now. Whatever they got planned in the census and their meter reading system and as far as radio read, uh, remote read, touch read, anything like that. But uh, apparently, that yeah, I, we did it 10 years ago. Re replaced the handhelds. Uh, they weren't supporting those devices anymore. So, you know, you could still use them, but once they break, they're not going to fix them. So anything like that. But we'll phase those in, and uh, uh, as time goes, get that taken care of. All right. <clears throat> You've got money in the 420 account? Yes. All right. What's the pleasure of the council? Is this a net cost? And if so, what's the value of the trade-in or the lack thereof? Uh, the trade-in, I forget what the, I think Lou's back here. You know what the trade-in was on those, Lou? Uh, with everything included, if you had a, if you had anything on a trade-in, it was about 5000 Okay, should be about fifteen grand if we did not trade in. Okay. Are there cheaper devices that would be compatible no. with our... Okay. No, because so, uh, Census is basically a proprietary stuff with their own equipment. I know there's devices out there, but they, they're kind of generic, and they'll read multiple devices, but they're not as quite as sophisticated uh, as what we have. How do we typically use this kind of equipment? What's the for, advantage of this? Um, makes it a lot quicker, less errors. You, you do not have any less errors. Less errors? Less errors, yeah, because like when you that. read a meter, it reads exactly what's on the meter. The only way you have an instance if the meter is not working properly, and then uh, the girls at the time they load them up with the computer, uh, they download everything. We go out read the meters. Everything's pretty instant, and then we bring them back in. It downloads. The efficiency is just 
you, you basically you're eliminating an error of, base, of manually entering. Okay. It does have that capability if for some reason you're not, something isn't working. You can manually operate that in any anything like that has a manual mode, but typically in an operation like that, as um, far as radio read, if you're going by, you can, I think they read meters up to 500,000 feet away. Oh. If it's radio read, yeah. If, if you go by and re read a radio read, and then you happen to use water and we walk back the other way, it'll pick that read up again on hmm. that. So it's constantly searching on the radio reads. And as time goes through the town, um, uh, we've talked in summer meetings about uh, doing a uh, promulgation study about uh, what they call, uh, uh, oh, it's a link system, remote rate like uh, RMCs have, like that. Yeah, it's called FlexNet. Basically, it would be a series of antennas. Uh, the meters would all be converted to radio reads. It's just a matter of uh, putting the devices in, and uh, the girls could just basically read the meter and real quick. What's what advantage does this give the customer? Uh, we have accu accuracy on the meters. Uh, then also to the newer meters that we're putting in, they data log. The newer ones that we're putting in will go back 90 days data logging. So if you have a bill, a history of a bill, and you have a, a, like for instance, today we went to a customer, their bill went up. And we put a new meter in a couple months ago. And um, I went to the house. And obviously they did have some toilet issues uh, leaking. And, uh, but I had the guys go out, we were able to take our laptop, put that on, and we could basically tell you what you used every hour for 45 days or 90 days. And we were able to find out when they were actually using that, that water at the time that they, apparently at night, they were flushing the toilet, went to bed, it just kept running, didn't catch it till the next morning and stuff like that. So that's the advantage of that. We can, sure. it's good customer relations because typically, the complaints that we get, anybody that calls in for a leak, we mention the toilet. And as soon as we do that, we're, we don't know what we're talking about. And, and that's, they're in kind of, I call it denial. Right. And, uh, but then when you get to talking to the customer, yeah, it does kind of stick every now and then. Okay. And uh, for instance, a, a pencil lead stream uh, in your toilet leak could leak up to 6,000 gallons a month easily. You wouldn't think of that, but you, Turn that on and it will add up. And these meters are uh, that we use are up to a sixteenth of a gallon a minute accuracy. There's no moving parts that measures uh, velocity through the uh, meter. And uh, so that keeps down head loss and anything like that and they're very accurate. Okay, so it creates credibility. Yes, absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah. And they do have an excellent warranty on the meters on okay. that. So works good. out pretty good for us. We've been using this system a long time. Good. On that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, what's the pleasure of council? Do we go ahead and uh, approve this expenditure? I make a motion we approve this expenditure. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. How long will it take to get one? Less than 30 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Mr. <clears throat> Hilton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I provided all the council members with uh, an agenda packet. should look something like this. If you guys will turn to agenda item E. Comparison of the Merit, Merit Police Commission and the regular Police Commission, which we operated it for several years now. I think I can go through each of these, and we can kind of go through and uh, compare the two for discussion. That's a lot to read. I mean, we've had our packet since Friday. We should have all been through it. Can you just give us the major differences? Major differences would be basically still five members. Uh, if we went with the merit system, the police officers would pick two members, and the president would pick two, and the board as a whole would pick one. If we stayed with the current system we had, uh, it's all up to the board. The officers get no selection of anybody on the, on the merit systems. Uh, if you go with the merit system, the only difference would be everything comes from state law. So everything's in Indiana code, the hiring process, the promotion process, your demotion process, everything is state statute. So there'd be no changing. It'd always be whatever Indiana code is. So that's another highlight of the merit system. How many towns use the merit system? Uh, I don't know how many. I know around Avon is currently around here, around here. Around here, Avon, and then the Sheriff's Department has something that's very similar. The sheriffs all use a merit system as well. 
I believe Mr. Morgan could speak to that. He's on the merit system and uh, has a lot of familiarity with that. Some other highlights would be um, it's still going to be the, uh, you're going to have two from one party and three from another party. So it, it's the same. Um, a quick question that I had was uh, yes. on, on the second page, it's appointment of upper level policy officers. Is that just the chief or does that include others? <clears throat> Under the merit system, upper policy making would be the assistant chief and the chief. And then with the uh, board? With the let's see with the merit system also no board members would be on the police commission yeah but this uh, discipline uh, appointment of upper level policy makers uh, but for a police commission would be the same the assistant chief and the chief correct that's my understanding okay any questions Mark, can you share any experiences you have with the comparison of the two and what you see as advantages and or disadvantages? Probably the biggest advantage, and again, I, I was reviewing uh, what Assistant Chief Hilton has prepared. One of the biggest differences, and again, I've not read the municipal um, part of it, at the county level, uh, merit, or the merit board serves a four-year term. So... Um, would appoint or deputies elect that is for a four-year term it creates some stability into the board and they're usually staggered terms um, so mm -hmm. with five members you know we try to stagger it out within different years but for placement the obviously the, one of the biggest benefits is, is the police officers have some buy-in into the board um, I, I was elected by the sheriff's deputies to serve on the merit board I'm their voice, basically. Uh, and there's another. I'm a Republican. There's a Democrat that uh, serves on the board. Again, it gives them uh, basically a voice into the thing. It's certainly not what you would consider a kangaroo court, even with a three to two, uh, because I think when people are appointed or they're elected like me, you, you do look at the totality of the circumstances um, to see, especially during discipline matters, Primarily, our function as a sheriff's mayor board is to ensure that the pension program is solid, make sure we're doing the right investments. Uh, discipline is more of a secondary. The Probably the biggest difference would be uh, a sheriff's mayor board just basically approves the sheriff's recommendations for hiring, whereas this board obviously would be the ones that would probably more, be more over the hiring of the officers. Similar to a merit board the sheriff doesn't answer to us he he is elected obviously by the citizens and this allows that similar even though your police chief's not elected your chief's not going to be held to that uh, merit board he'll be held to this board so that's some of the similarities uh, but I think the the biggest thing is it does give your officer some buy-in um, plus you have with a with the merit board nice thing about it is if there's a disciplinary matter that goes before the merit board this board becomes the appellate board uh, so if uh, if the uh, merit board um, let's say the officer doesn't like whatever the decision would be made this board would be the appellate board now under Indian law for sheriff's departments that could actually go on to the circuit court they can make appeal into the circuit court um, again I haven't read the municipal version of it yet but I don't believe it'd be a whole lot of difference should be very similar so you're, you're accurate with that the summary so this council would act as the board's purposes and by your officers does not agree with this council in the
offices on the Silver Pole Access Center, Peace Study with Cruz, on the Merit Commission Program. These people pass the test too because they have So it is a narrative to make a move to merit commission, you can't move away from the system. Once you make that decision, that you make that final decision, understand that there will be a merit commission challenge to that. It's more, it is more property of interest and protection to officers under the merit system. Do either one affect the uh, retirement program? No, still PERF 77, so it's police fire PERF, same retirement. No difference. No difference. Lose nothing. Lose nothing. Okay. Any protections one way or the other in that regard to the retirement fund? Not to the retirement fund. Yeah, it'd be the same. So what are the, do you see any advantages of the Metropolitan Board of Police? Well, I see advantages so? to the merit system. I see advantages to the merit system, obviously, because state law is going to protect uh, the promotion process, the hiring process, the demotion process, all the disciplinary matters. Everything comes from state code. No changes in that, unless legislators change the law itself. So there's the advantages I see of it. Have you worked under both? I have not. Okay. And one thing to remember as well is if this council decides they want to go down the road towards a merit commission, um, it will have to be ratified by the officers and the members of the police department itself. So you'll need a two thirds vote okay. of the officers to make that transition into a merit commission. Because, you know, their feet are held to the fire as well. I mean, it is truly a merited position at that point. They're going to have to pass tests in order to move up the ranks and things of that nature. I don't think, it just, just for your clarification, Mr. President, I don't believe Assistant Chief Hilton is looking for a decision tonight. I believe he wanted to introduce this to you. Mm -hmm. uh, this may be uh, something we visit in a work study session or uh, at another time. I think more than anything, he just wanted to introduce it to you tonight so that you had the information mm -hmm. available to you. Great. Okay. Good. Work study, perhaps? Mm hmm Okay. Um, so we will... Um, Need to find a, a date and time that works well with everybody uh, on that. Can you give us uh, a little bit of time so we can get to some consensus on a date for work study? Absolutely. And then, uh, would it be prudent? Uh, well, obviously we've mentioned it here in this meeting, but for for uh, Chief Helton to um, mention this to to the to the membership. Um, I, I mean, obviously, if, if, if there's not a two-thirds interest, then, you know, I don't want to waste a lot of our time if, if there's not uh, any kind of interest in, from the department side. I've spoke with uh, several members. It seems like they, they do like the merit system. So without taking a vote, I wouldn't know where we're at as far as two-thirds. Could you, could you, there's another way to go about it okay. as well, is that the full action can be started by the members of the department as well. So the, the full-time members of the police department can take an action and essentially do the vote first and then make a request to the council to make the transition to merit board. And that way, um, I, I think of the statute, it's a 90-day period that you have to take action upon a request, um, but I have to look that up. Would it be possible for you to get this information that you gave us yes. out to the membership to see where they where they stand absolutely and if it looks favorable then would you like me to go ahead and try to get a, a vote and see where we're at number wise uh, no, i don't know about it uh, can you do a straw poll yeah you, you can do whatever you want to do i mean there's no regulation regarding the decision or the what's going on at the department itself within the members uh, to make that determination but it, it triggers any timing triggers upon when a request is made by the membership to the council to enact it then we have a if you can do some kind of informal poll with all your people 
and we absolutely get back uh, next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Make it happen. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> I think I'm up again. Uh, you guys will turn to your. Uh, yes, sir. Are you done with this particular part, or you got something else? Yeah, another one. Yeah, sir. I'm on the agenda for the next one. I don't know if you, you got a question for E still. No, I have a question. I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Going down 465, and I thought I saw a Danville police car protecting a construction site. Uh huh. Is that did I see that or did I not? Very possible. Off duty employment. Yes. Sir? Off duty employment, yes. They work off duty jobs, doing security, stuff like that. And they use our they use our car? Yes. And who pays for the maintenance, insurance, and gasoline? The town of Danville. Hmm. That's interesting. So do we do this a lot? Yes. I have for years. We've done this for years. Yes, sir. As do other departments. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Okay, moving on to agenda item F. <clears throat> if the council will turn to F and the packet I provided them, due to some recent issues we've had with some town computers, some data breach issues, I asked one choice to give us a quote to service the police vehicle computers. I've included a quote in your guys' packets. Basically, it's a six month term. It's uh, $1,300 per month. It comes out to around $8,000 for six months. Um, currently, Corporal Oliphant works on all the police computers. He's did this for a number of years. He's did a great job doing this. Uh, it usually takes place after school hours and uh, kind of when school's on breaks. Uh, the recent move that we're going to 365 and some of the other things the town's doing with computers. I went ahead and got a quote just because of the data breach and some of the security issues we're having. So I thought it'd be good to bring it to the board tonight just to introduce this to see what you guys think. Uh, I brought the IT people that are here, and he can come up here and explain a little bit more what I, one choice can provide for the town. Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Corey Kaler, president of One Choice Technology. Um, Assistant Chief Hilton requested that we uh, have a sit down and talk about some of their IT needs uh, a couple weeks back. And um, when we came on with you guys, we take care of all of the town's computer and information technology assets, except for the computers and the cars. Um, I believe in, originally that was the case as a cost saving measure. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Um, I think we're, we're starting to realize that we're getting into a situation where um, those computers would benefit and those employees would benefit from a common set of enforced security policies, um, the monitoring and maintenance that we currently provide to the other town assets, um, monitored and, and maintained antivirus and anti-malware softwares, uh, enforcement of firewall policies uh, on those computers, especially considering all of those devices are directly connected to the internet um, without any other kind of protection. Uh, all the officers carry a, a MiFi hotspot with them and connect their computer directly to the internet, um, <clears throat> which is, creates a larger security hole and an attack surface than what you guys currently have with a regular office computer. Um, you know, all the regular office computers are behind an internal firewall and, and, and there's quite a bit more protection between them and, and the outside world. Um, this would give the benefit uh, of on those computers uh, of all of those monitoring and maintenance tasks as well as uh, the security aspect, but it would also give the ability to enforce additional pol security policies. Um, you, you guys approved last year um, our Cisco umbrella product that we've deployed townwide, which gives some additional protections and gives you the ability to do some filtering and some, you know, make sure that if a, if a piece of malware does get through, hopefully you stop it in its tracks and keep you from going to the website that, you know, brings that malware in. Plus, if you go to that, then if you go to the website, you know, the second, the next layer of security is 
We've got the antivirus uh, protection, the anti-malware protection on there. Um, that's something that is being done to, to some degree. Um, now, from what I understand, I haven't spent much time on those computers, but um, I know that there's a desire to bring those into the fold and, and put those in the management with the rest of the assets that the town has under management with us. Um, so what we're proposing, um, Chief Hilton and I had a, a conversation about his budget and finding the money to do this. So what we're proposing is a discounted rate for on a six month term to start uh, June 1st to get them through the end of the, the end of the year. And then the plan would be to roll those 25 or so PCs that he has that need to be managed into the renewal with the rest of the town's PCs, which is currently um, a, what I'm gonna call a global, you may have a better word for it, but it's not a department specific contract. It's for the whole town as a whole and it comes, it's a host fund item. So um, my understanding is, is that the police department would cover those costs, correct? through the end of the year and then we would roll that into the into the renewal um, that would come up in January. Does that miss anything, guys? All right. Just to have sufficient funds in host to cover the project. They're basically going to move from a priority project that they had to this project. Is that correct? Yeah. One of the other benefits, uh, if I may, is this will give our we always have someone available during normal business hours to, to service requests and I know that's an issue that, that they've had is you know right now um, Matt's not getting any help and if he goes on vacation or he does you know he, he's gone or, or whatever's go, whatever's going on in his life there's there's nobody to, to, to service those guys and to help them with their computers so we've worked out a schedule where we can be available at the end of uh, the night shift for those guys that are coming off and have a couple of PCs, uh, you know, floating PCs available for them if they have problems overnight. Um, and we're, op we're typically we're, we're open till six o'clock. There's usually somebody there until around seven. Um, so those guys, you work six to six, right? Yes. So those guys that are coming on at six can either catch us in the evening before they start their shift if they're having a problem or they can catch us the next morning as they're ending their shift. Um, we usually have somebody there by about 7 or 7.30. So <clears throat> I think we have a satisfactory schedule worked out for that. And then obviously the daytime guys, um, they can come by our office and get help or they can, you know, we're right here in town. They can give us a call and we can help remotely just like we do now. They all have internet access in their cars so we can remote in and help just like we would any other town employee, no matter where they are. So if an officer has a, a laptop that goes down in their car and they need a backup, and you talked about one of these floaters. Mm -hmm. are, are, are they housed here or are they housed at your place? No, I, I envision them being housed probably in the squad room or some secure location at, within the police department so that they have access to those 24 hours a day. That way, if there is a problem, they can get that. One of the things we're, we're going to do right now, each of those computers is managed individually. So each computer has a username. Each person has a username and password on each computer instead of like the rest of the town computers where there's a centralized database that manages usernames and passwords and you can take your username and go over here and log in at these PCs that you have rights to. They don't have that now. So one of the things that we're gonna be able to do by bringing them into <coughs> management is have a common username and password and any officer can sit down at any laptop that's designated as a squad, squad car PC and log in. So they don't have to have um, any any changes made in their two-factor authentication device. They don't have to have any changes made to the machine. Those are all hurdles that they're experiencing now based on the fact that the PCs are all individually managed and there's no common centralized database that takes care of username and user and password authentication. So this will give us greater uniformity then. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. The news is full of this uh, cyber attacks that we're trying to prepare for as a country. What have you done to prepare for that, um, to prevent that? Um, I could probably pontificate about that for quite some time. So well, I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, the major things that we do is, is we take um, a multi-layered approach. We try and protect the, 
the, the major point of ingress for malware and cybersecurity attacks is through email. So the major thing we focus on is trying to protect email. Um, and we're already doing that with, with products like MailAssure that we, we have that's town-wide. So we're trying to protect the front line as far as making sure those things don't ever come into the network to begin with. And then the second layer is you assume, well, the malware's come in through the front door and, and we invited it in and somebody clicked something they shouldn't have. The next layer of defense is um, the Cisco Umbrella product, <clears throat> which they don't currently have anything like that. What that does is it says the malware is on the computer. The next thing that usually happens is, is it tries to go to the internet and either put some of your personal information out there or pull in a virus or pull in something that you know it wants to, it wants to bring onto your computer to, to do further malicious acts. So Umbrella blocks that and, and gives you the added benefit of being able to create policies for um, web content filtering and things like that, if you so choose. Um, the third layer is, okay, we've got through, we've got through Umbrella, we've got through MailAssure, um, and now we've got to protect the PC itself. And that's where the anti-malware and anti-virus software comes in. And we manage that, monitor that. Our system monitors it 24 seven. Um, it uses automatic remediation. So if your computer is online and it didn't get an update, it pushes it again and pushes it again. And if it can't, eventually it, it's, within a few hours, when I say eventually, it raises an alert and says, somebody needs to intervene, a physical person needs to look at this. We get alerts like that um, in our network operations center and we say, hey, we've got to remote in and look at this PC proactively, figure out why it's not getting updated, right? So that's something that's not happening now, simply just because there aren't resources to do that. Um, <clears throat> and then that's, uh, the next step is in our multi-layer approach is not really related to the police department per se, but is backup. You know, we want to make sure that everything is backed up that is important <laughs> to them. So us bringing us into the fold and being involved in the decision-making process and involved in the implementation of things in the police department just through exposure to their department is going to help us make sure that we're, we're advising them on, on protecting their assets and protecting the things that need to be backed up. Um, or need to further protection. That way, um, we have very little interaction with their department right now and, and the most of their employees as a whole. Um, so this will help in that, as way, in that way as well. Who's liable when we're, if we get presented with a situation that was uh, amplified in the news recently where towns were held hostage for 50, 60, 70, 80, $100,000 to get unfrozen their computers? <coughs> Are you liable for that? So. Typically, what the best plan of attack in a situation like that is cyber security insurance. Um, we are insured for threats like that, um, but as the first line of defense is your own cyber security insurance. And from what I understand, I think you have a policy that protects against that. That's a question for Kevin Hill. I, I don't know yeah, the answer I to that. Him highlighting that the other day. But yeah. that that is the single most important thing from a cyber security perspective. Um, liability perspective that a town or a municipality, anybody um, of so your we have, size. We have two layers of that. You have one, we have one also. Correct. Okay. Any other Sorry. questions? Oh. <clears throat> Will, you're good with this? Yeah, and Jenny is okay with the future rolling it in to okay. plan for the future. That's all I had. Any other questions on this? I'll make a motion that we enter into a contract with one choice for the police and car computers. Second. All right, we have a motion to enter into a contract with one choice. We have a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Oh, wait a minute. Are we going to pay this monthly? Typically, the, uh, the town generally pays us in one lump sum yearly is what happens. I really, I really don't have any care one way or the other how that's handled. I assume that Jenny typically prefers to write us one check as opposed to dealing with an invoice from us monthly. I assume that's what she'll want to do, but I don't want to put words in her mouth. I recommend we pay it monthly. It's like that be an emotion. The the quote set up with total payments of one thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. 
uh, a one-time fee and then five monthly payments to finish out the, uh, out the year at one. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically the one-time fee would be your, to start yeah. and then the, the five monthly remaining monthly payments to get you to the end of the year. Okay. And then we'll roll, roll it over in January. Yeah. All right. And you've got money in your account. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I just want to clarify. Was your motion to accept it? Uh, it's accepted as it was presented monthly, and then enter next okay. year. Got it. We're all. We all understand that. Yes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thank How long you, will it take to uh, get this initiated? I'd say, well, we'll start June 1st per the contract. So right. we'll start probably around a week before, so the end, the end of May, um, start implementing, and then we'll be ready to start taking support <laughs> calls and, and be live June 1st per the contract. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. You're on a roll tonight. <laughs> Let's keep going. Police CSI salary ordinance. If you guys will turn to uh, Police Department Agenda G. We introduced this uh, a couple weeks back. So basically what I'm wanting to do is change the position title from police clerk to police clerk CSI agent is what I have on the ordinance that Jenny did a couple weeks back. I don't know if we have a, a new ordinance that she changed. Looks like that's what we that's, still have. Okay. No, it's described here as police clerk slash CSI agent. Ordinance 14, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is the help with the recruitment and retention. And I asked the board to take a vote tonight, try to amend the salary ordinance, the police clerk position, and change the title as well. Um, most everyone in this room's probably watched CSI and Name the City, or you watch some kind of show that involves uh, a CSI helping out at a crime show or something like that. So it's very important for us as a police department to have the CSI position because when we go to court, there's something called the CSI effect. I was just recently in a jury trial where forensic evidence has become paramount for us to prove our case when we go to trial with jury members. So it's, it's imperative that we have the CSI position. Uh, we currently have a police clerk who has been to the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. She's trained to be a, a crime scene investigator. Sorry about the CSI part. So crime scene investigator for CSI. Uh, but she is certified through the state of Indiana, and she also has been to several other classes. And the reason that we're asking to change the title is to keep up with the recruitment and retention of that position. Uh, recently, she was asked to put in for another department. Uh, her current salary's top pay is $34,000. Other CSI or crime scene investigators in the area make between forty dollars and $50,000. So we're trying to keep up with the other towns that are around us and keep her around and then also whenever she does go to retire a police clerk position we can also recruit somebody else to come in it's gonna be real hard for us to get somebody to come in for 34,000 to do the job that is currently being done so I asked you guys tonight to uh, consider this and and take a vote on this and I'll any questions you guys have yes sir this involved car car was discussed uh, most the car was discussed we do have five cars available as pool vehicles uh, all the other CSI's positions in the county do provide a vehicle for take home. So that's up for discussion with you guys tonight as well. What's your recommendation? I'd recommend that we follow suit with the other agencies and provide a vehicle. Uh, the police or the crime scene investigator carries around lots of uh, different equipment and uh, she has lots of different things that it would be hard for her. Right now what she does is she drives into the police department. If we call her out at 2 in the morning, she drives into the police department. She has to get all her stuff that she keeps in her office. She puts that back into her personal vehicle and then goes to the crime scene and meets us. So by having a, a vehicle at her disposal, everything that ought to be in the vehicle, and at 2 in the morning, she'd be able to drive straight to the scene, saving us some time there. What, what vehicle do you have in mind for her? We currently have five pool vehicles, probably then. Are they all pickups? No. We have two trucks, two SUVs, and one vehicle. Uh, one so it's a car so which of those three probably types? the car right now are one of the SUVs the SUVs are unmarked and the cars unmarked as well 
Mark, do we have to do two motions, one to amend and then one to vote on, or we can just do it in one? Do it in one um, because this was already introduced. Okay. Any other questions? This lady has, lady, right? Yes, sir. This lady is, um, has been to school for this. Yes, sir. State certified a few years back. That's what I thought you said. Okay, ordinance 14 2019 an ordinance to amend ordinance 25 2018 with 2019 <laughs> salaries and other compensation for officials employees and appointees of the town of Danville this was introduced last uh, meeting and so we can act upon it tonight if it's the will of the council so move to include a car All right, we have a motion to pass ordinance number 14, 2019, and provide a, a vehicle. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's get it going. Thank you, gentlemen. And make sure uh, you meet with Kevin Hill so he understands. All right, plan commission appointment. Uh, you go get those, sir. Oh, all right, vehicle purchase. Dang it, trying to save some money. Very well. The two of me goes. <laughs> Good evening. Um, since we have an extra vehicle now, um, the vehicle that I drive was purchased by Stormwater. Um, Will would find more use of that the parks because it does have a snow plow. It does have uh, some uh, toolboxes in the back. Um, it's a much larger. It's an HD truck. It works better for what he uses it for. The other vehicle was Laura Parker's old vehicle. Um, it's a V6. It's a lot better on gas. Gets me where I need to be on the sites. Uh, it just works out better all the way around. So um, we did some pricing, and there's only about $1,200 difference between the two vehicles. Um, the stormwater vehicle is more valuable. Um, but it's six years old, so we just wanted to do the swap, and he would pay the stormwater department back the, the difference. Um, and that's what we're here for. Because, because the vehicle that the superintendent often drives was purchased with stormwater money, it cannot be just granted to another department. It has to be reimbursed, or this type of exchange has to occur because it's a utility that the money was used to purchase the Nobody wants used vehicles except for the park. Because <laughs> it's all we can afford. <laughs> it's in good shape. It is. It's in good shape. It only has 28,000 miles on the vehicle, so it is, it is in good shape. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thoughts from the council? Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah? Makes okay. sense to me. So how do we do the transfer then? If we can just see the vote. Anybody want to make a motion to make a swap? Motion that we make a swap between the two departments. All right. Second. So motion and a second to swap vehicles and then uh, Parks Department pay the $1,200 difference. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank not have been talking about you <laughs> <laughs> about the planning vehicle <laughs> yeah. we better get to I plan, pretty quick yes. or H whatever yeah. we're on <laughs> plan commission appointment uh, we have an opening on a plan commission uh, we did advertise this was uh, uh, specifically for a Democrat uh, we uh, received one application is that correct and uh, Tracy Jones uh, was that applicant and uh, we need to make an appointment. Uh, is that by me or the council? I believe it's by you. Okay. In that case, uh, are you guys okay with uh, Tracy Jones? I'm okay with Tracy. Uh, since Tracy was our one, I will make the appointment to Tracy Jones to the plan commission. Would you uh, make sure that, that he gets that? Is he here? Tracy's a guy. She's not here. Tracy's still a guy. 
Okay. Oh, that Tracy. Okay, I got yep. you. Courthouse. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lisa, you're up. And he must bring the vote. Yes. Well, that's good because I sit on Good evening. Um, the ordinances that you have were from the meeting that you had last month or two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think, uh, on the zoning amendments. We did not have the ordinances prepared that night. They were presented, so now we just need the signatures. Okay, this is ordinance number 11, 2019, an ordinance uh, of the town of Danville rezoning certain territory. Uh, the petition, this is uh, Jeremy Elgin on behalf of ESWI Properties, LLC, uh, for the town of Danville rezone certain real estate located at lot number five in block one of the Irving subdivision of Outlook number two. Uh, the street address is 167 North Cross Street. Ben, uh, ben Comer, are you representing this? Second one, 502 West. Okay. okay. We'll get you. <laughs> okay, the real estate described in the attached legal description shall have the zoning classification of industrial light subject to the attached written commitments. And there is no written commitments, indeed. So this came before the council before. It's simply rezoning it from a county description to, to a town. No, this was in the town. This is within the town. Right. Okay. Yeah. The light industrial. You're just asking us for signatures, correct? Yes. Yes. For the ordinance. So we talked about this was presented before. What's the pleasure of the council? Waiting on someone to yes. make a yes. motion. <laughs> okay, I've got no, there's no vote. Is there a no. vote? Yes, there's a vote. Yeah. Uh, we, was there some question about an agreement uh, on this piece? Yeah, uh, there is a commitment that we will get recorded uh, to not allow wire to not allow wireless communications facilities on this site, and the reason being is because the owner of the property to the south is the same owner as this property, and that was a commitment that they made when they rezoned that property. It's uh, Torque Engineering. And we just felt that it should be, since they were going to be using it for the same type of business, that they should have the same commitment. But they have provided us with a commitment that will get recorded okay. and it will run with the land. I have no commitment on this right now. Okay. Well, when I talked to Jenny, I didn't, I wasn't aware that she needed that to be attached. I can go grab it if you want to wait Please, for just because, a moment. Yeah, okay. because we're voting on this and it says yeah. subject to the attached okay. written right. commitment. Forward if you want. It's up to you. That's, that's okay. That's all right. Thank you. We're, we're all good. All right, we'll jump over to ordinance number 12 real quick. An ordinance of the town of Danville is only certain territory. Dan, do you have anything to add to this? this no, sir. Uh, gotta earn your money. <laughs> we are rezoning from an R2C residential two central district to a general business. Is that correct? Correct. There are no commitments on this one. commitment <laughs> okay statement of commitment wireless communication tower shall not be permitted on the property okay hold on just a second Ben we're gonna go back to this you're much faster than we thought we weren't wasting any time but you weren't either <laughs> all right so ordinance number 11 with the commitment of no radio towers what's the pleasure of the council do we have a motion to accept ordinance number 11? Was that the only ornament on that tree, or was there some other discussion about an agreement, another agreement? No, not, not on this side. You may be getting with confused the nightmare with the, the next night. one. Yeah. Okay. Yes, All so right. there was, yeah. Make a motion to pass ordinance number 11, 2019. We have a uh, motion to accept ordinance number 11. Do I have a second? 
Second. I have a second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor of passing ordinance number 11, 2019, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Now, commitments concerning the use of development of real property in connection with general business zoning. There is a whole list. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's a whole list of uses that they are agreeing to not place on this site. Um, Banks, financial institutions, a boarding house, bed and breakfast, clinics, commercial greenhouse, communication relay tower, dancing aerobics or gymnastics studio, electric appliance sales, government facilities, got a grocery store, hotel, motel, laboratories, or sadly, uh, or lodges or private clubs. Or a nursery school or an office. <laughs> Optical goods store, playhouse, police station, sorry, and a post office, public uh, garage, libraries, museums, parks, radio, TV, recycling center, restaurant, roadside food sales stand, satellite dish stands, a public school, a parochial school, uh, studio for professional work, telephone exchange, trade or, or business school, Travel agencies, tree nursery, veterinarian with or without boarding, and wireless communication tower, as well as alteration shop, dry cleaning, laundry, e repair, tailors, coffee shop, refreshment stands, delicatessen, meat market, <coughs> and barbershop, beauty shop, health spa, massage bar, uh, excuse me, massage therapy or tanning salon. Uh, no bait stores, <laughs> apparel, shoe store, flower shop, gift souvenirs. Hey, I want to make sure everybody knows. Jewelry store, news dealer, record shop, antique shop, stationery, sporting goods, rug, basically anything that's retail. Pottery or china store? When's the last time you saw a pottery or store? china store? Uh, liquor store, I did not see on there. I was waiting for zoo alphabetically. What's that? I don't think so. All right. So, rezoning this from R2C to general business with those commitments. What's the pleasure of the council? You want to approve ordinance number 12? So moved. Got a motion to approve ordinance 12. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second. Further discussion? All of those in favor of rezoning from an R2C to a general business with commitments signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance passes. We'll get that signed here with the rest of it. All right. Uh, request to move event for a street closure. I was contacted by Julie McLaughlin, who uh, came to you, appeared before the council to utilize the uh, Square for a uh, for lack of a better a skunk rescue fest. I don't know what else to call it. Um, unfortunately, uh, when she started uh, preparing vendors for the event, most of them were obviously tied up for other Jul July Fourth festivals, and so she found it to be problematic to kind to of find someone to come and uh, participate. She originally had asked to move it to July twentieth. We informed her that was a concert on the square and the square would not be available. So she is requesting now to do July 27th. Um, she does have insurance for the event. It's not date specific. And uh, this has always uh, been a council decision, but it's up to you guys how you want to handle it. Um, like I said, it is a street closure. Uh, so that usually requires your guys' uh, authorization. Okay, we approved this before for the 4th of July. Uh, and did, uh, have we happened to check with uh, street department make sure that there's this no, there's no issue again okay. yes sir I talked to some of the uh, people in the square they don't really think it's a good thing for the square <coughs> and thought it'd be a better thing for the park put a, put she park. did rent a facility Pardon? she rented a shelter 
from us for it originally, but then went to the square, came to you guys. So she originally had a, a shelter house uh, rented for the event on July the 4th, and I'm not sure why she came in and asked you for the square. Um, that's. I don't think it really warrants the square. It warrants something like the park. It's, it's really your guys' decision. I don't know what these yeah. guys feel. But yeah. We, when we, you we, rent a shelter like that, is there a, uh, a, a flat fee, or how do you, how do you uh, yes. what's the rental? Uh, she's out of town, so there would be a non-resident rate. What would that be? Uh, it's $100. And with that fee paid, does that require your personnel or our personnel to clean up after her event For the most or any part, event? In the park, we're always cleaning up after her. <laughs> okay. Um, Amen. <laughs> they, they pretty much take care of most of the stuff themselves. Um, and we just kind of build it in that fee because we just, you know, we pretty much know we're going to be picking up after her. So uh, trash removal, stuff like that. It's pretty common. I mean, anytime the amphitheater's rented, which is the space that she did rent, that area, it's going to take a little bit more work. But okay. we're okay with it. We want to have those events and have those opportunities for people. Well, I agree with what Tom said in terms of taking the square. And I've talked to merchants up there about shutting the square down. I hate to say we've already approved it for her to do it July 4th because she couldn't get enough vendors. I don't think it's fair to not approve it for the second date. I wouldn't approve it in the future, but I just don't think that I think we're I don't think we should go back on what we've already agreed on. Just my opinion. I agree. I don't like going back. Um, it would be nice. She claimed to have turned away vendors. Uh, <coughs> so Excuse if that's me. the case, this actually could uh, turn out to be something interesting. I mean, it's not just about skunk. It's it's about I just can't imagine that there's going to be that many vendors. Vendors for skunks. I think it's animal rescue all the way around. Yeah. Uh, and I, I can imagine, like, the Humane Society would probably have something out there to try to adopt a, a, a puppy or a kit, a kitten. Uh, so I, I do agree with Dennis. I think uh, we've made the commitment. We should follow through. Let's see where it takes us. I mean, the worst case scenario, it, it flops. But we've had events on the square flop before. And if it turns out to be something, something big, uh, if it's as big as what she said from, from the county fairgrounds, then maybe we should take advantage of it. So that's just my two cents. thought about a <clears throat> permit fee since people are already used to paying a fee for utilization of our shelters in the park. Uh, we're going to have some expense as far as uh, Department of Public Works is concerned for shutting the street down and, and whatever else is associated with that. Would this be a good time to implement a $75 fee? Uh, offset that cost of, that we're going to experience? Well, I think if we're going to implement a new fee, we're going to have to, it'll have to be introduced as an ordinance uh, submitted into our code of ordinances, obviously, or we can make an amendment. Uh, but I don't know that, if I'm not mistaken, sir, I don't think we can do it tonight. Yeah, you're, you're, when you talk about new fees, you have to have an option for the uh, public to come in and discuss it, have your... We probably ought to do that. Consider that. And we already gave her the approval once before. This is simply moving a date. I don't want to start adding other uh, contingencies on top of that just because somebody may not find it attractive. So do we accept the movement from July 4th to 27th? Motion. And motion. All right. I have a motion to, to move the event from July 4th to the 27th. Second. And I have a second. Further discussion? I think we have to give it a shot. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Motion passes 4-1. Thank, Thank you. you. And while you're up there. Yes, sir. How about a pre-bid announcement? Excellent. Uh, spoke with Banning Engineering. We're ready to go to bid uh, for the Stratford Ridge project. Um, they're anticipating it to come in uh, under what the original cost was. Unfortunately, um, they're not willing to commit to say <laughs> what the actual dollar amount will be. But um, it, I think it's going to. I think it'll be under four hundred thousand. Don't you, Kent? Don't you? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the uh, 
they're looking at introducing bids to the council on June the 3rd. So they're, will, they're, they're going to start uh, accepting the bids uh, once we put it out for public advertising. They'll do all of that. We've hired them uh, so we can let them do that. Um, we're looking at May the 16th as an open house for the uh, Stratford Ridge citizens to come in and uh, see what the plan is, uh, look at it. We're going to have it at the train station. Uh, when did I reserve it? 10 a.m.? or Do you remember, Julie? 7.30 p.m., sorry. So uh, that way the citizens can be there in the evening hours. Uh, so we reserve the train station so that uh, those people can come in, see the plans, and uh, uh, answer any questions. Uh, Manning will have uh, poster boards up of the project so that they can see what it's going to be like, uh, what the exit, the entrance, because, again, they're going to have to do one side and the other so that we're not completely shutting down uh, Stratford Ridge or Stratford Way. Okay. Um, May 21st, uh, we'll have a pre-bid hearing or pre-bid meeting uh, between uh, myself, Public Works, Stormwater, um, you know, all, pretty much all the players uh, in Banning. Uh, we'll do that here at Town Hall and uh, uh, to make sure that all of our ducks in a row before we go to bid. And then, like I said, uh, we'll put it out for bid and, and June the 3rd will be our bid date. And um, Ken, I know this isn't your project, but maybe Julie can answer. September would be a prospect. Complete. August. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, August what? August. they have the pre-bed meeting on the 21st and we're accepting bids on the 3rd, is that going to be enough time, Ken? Typically? Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I feel I need to let you know that there's been some public works questions and uh, Ray texted me about 730 and said that he is sorry he couldn't be here, but the uh, phone people just showed up at Sycamore Lane and he's yeah. trying to coordinate that with yes, them sir. and so he keep, apologized for not being here. No worries. I I'd actually informed he informed him that he didn't need to do it. Okay. Right, so. right. Where, Thank you. Speaking of that, where are we on the Sycamore project? The Sycamore project is the next big project. Uh, what we're anticipating, Julie, correct me if I'm wrong on this. We're looking at a community crossings grant because this thing is going to be huge. Uh, okay. It is going to be a massive, massive project. By the time we uh, look at the length of Sycamore, it's quite a bit longer than Stratford. Uh, there's going to be much more drainage issues uh, because of the way the hill is designed. Um, we've got water coming down that road constantly right now uh, due to some drainage issues. So um, we feel like it's a good candidate for a community crossings grant. Um, it'll give us more money to substantially do that correctly. So, okay. Does that sound right, Julie? Okay. Are there any other large projects like that that we see in the near future? Julie? Okay. Where? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Dump yeah. road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, Mount, are we monitoring all the chatter on that? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they, they are having to, to do core samples because, again, we're we're not sure it would, because after we inherited the road, we're not sure of the depth of the road. And, oh. yeah. it, it may have not been built to handle that kind of uh, traffic. Traffic? Yeah. Tonnage. Um, Anything else? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. All right, uh, public comment. Anything from the pub public tonight? I do have one thing to say uh, on um, item K. We do already have a temporary use permit, but I think that that was bid over. But it is $75. So I think that would fall under that permit as well. Hmm. 
And yet we already located it. Where were you when we needed you? I'm here now. I'm just saying in the future we do have a permit. Okay. All right. We can talk about that tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Going to the principal's office now on that one, Barry. All right. Again, anything from the public? Did we have anybody sign up? Okay. Around the horn. Um, one of the comments that um, we've received uh, in the last two months that we've been doing this is the lack of follow-up on some of the items that have been brought before the council. So I just have a couple of things. Um, we approached the council about a recruitment agreement uh, between Beasley's and um, any other people that wanted to attach once that was done. Uh, Beasley's and their attorney uh, worked the numbers and decided it would not be fiscally beneficial to anyone uh, to involve themselves in a recruitment agreement. So I was contacted by their attorney, uh, Jerry worked with them, and they basically said, you know what, we're not interested in this. It's, it's not worth our time and money. So um, that's now off the table. Um, the clerk treasurer and I met with the, uh, a representative from the Census Bureau uh, to get ready for the 2020 Census. Um, we have sent a letter of commitment letting them know that uh, uh, Danville's on board all the way and whatever we need to do. Um, they'll start probably this summer, we'll start getting out information. It'll be in your water bills. Look for the, uh, uh, looking for it in the paper, uh, letting you know that there will be opportunities for census takers. Um, we're always looking for somebody to go out and actually do that. Um, there's also going to be uh, joint meetings here at the town hall where they'll bring in their people and we'll bring in people and there'll be informational sessions so that you guys can have an idea of what's going on with the census for 2020. Um, the last is, is that um, if you recall, probably two meetings ago, the school system came to us, asked us to assist with watering and um, we went out, Jimmy Russell, myself, Ray Whitaker, and uh, Will, and we went out and we looked at the project. At first concern is we thought we were going to have to try and bore underneath about 500 yards of blacktop. I mean, it was, it was a daunting project. We were like, wait a minute, we may have committed a little too early here, but um, we were pleasantly informed that the project had been moved to a different location. Um, this is going to be so simple for us as far as the town's involvement. Um, Superintendent Russell's found a company that has volunteered to do the boring underneath the uh, roadway on the west side of the uh, middle school. There's a fire hydrant right there. We're going to tap into that, bore underneath the uh, roadway, set a meter just on the opposite side of that, and the school is basically going to do the rest. They have, the, they have all the piping they need. Uh, they are going to borrow our trencher, which we're okay with at the rate that this is being done so um, and they're gonna they'll be monitoring their own meters and, and paying a water bill just like anybody else but they will have running water to that facility now so uh, it was a win-win for everybody that's all i have sir okay well um congrats to all the new folks that's all yeah okay well you get to chime in <laughs> sorry welcome yeah, yeah. glad to be here okay. if, if if i may of i have course. introduced uh uh, this is Jewel Lee. He is our the town's attorney, um, employed with Taft. I know there's another word in front of it, but I can't Taft, think. It's in That's it. Yes. So, um, uh, but um, uh, this was a decision that the council made at the last meeting to have uh, legal representation here at the meetings, and excited to have him here. We used to have that back in the day. Yes, sir. In the Kevin Dogan days. Yes. Yes, sir. We remember that. Okay. Anything from the department heads? All right, Jim. Yes, I'd like to make a request that uh, in our packets that we get a uh, copy of minutes from all the committees so that we can, so that I can keep up with what's going on around me. I noticed from some uh, previous meetings a couple of years ago, we had minutes from different committees and I'd like to see those so I'm aware of what's happening. Okay. Please, sir. sir. Anything else? Not at the moment. Well, this is your time. <laughs> <laughs> there would be another meeting. I hope so. All right. Tom. Dennis. Chris. Uh, Talks Away Days in Danville is May 18th at the fairgrounds. 
Are you taking all the heavy equipment? All the good uh, stuff. Everything? All right. Anything else? Nope. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I've got one thing here real quick. Uh, to the concerned citizens of Danville, Indiana, I received your letter of concern email by Pete Lynch and mentioned at the last town meeting by Jim Stevens. I've been asked to respond to this document, and I will. Uh, one concern was a lack of transparency from the council. All council meetings are published and advertised, including work study meetings and executive sessions. While executive sessions are not usually open to the public, the other meetings are. Tonight we heard from Assistant Police Chief Hilton explain the difference between a police commission and a merit board. Uh, the council will take this under advisement, discuss, discuss the pros and cons of each system uh, after we, we hear from the uh, officers. Uh, the former police chief resigned, and that is a personal personnel issue that I will not discuss. An example of myself not talking about a town issue is the food and beverage tax for Danville. Uh, I had a nice little paragraph all written up here, but I just received word that the governor has signed the bill. So the next steps will be for the town management and the council and our attorney to get together uh, to form a plan. There will be a public meeting, so there can be public input on this. Uh, so there, I got the text while we were in this meeting. So uh, we need to sit down and, as a town, plan out what our next step is. So we'll keep you all abreast of what's going on. And I know that we will have a public meeting on this issue. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, to okay. enact it, you'll have to talk. Okay. All right. Great. See, I knew there was a reason we had you here tonight. <laughs> uh, regarding my statements concerning residency requirements for department leaders, first, this was a suggestion for my fellow council members to consider. And secondly, this was a thought to create uniformity and consistency within our town policies. <coughs> Another area mentioned was conflicts between what is in the best interest of the town and personal agendas. The example cited was with the former police chief, and again, is a personnel issue that I will not discuss. Of the, two, of the police commission, two members are or were members of the council, so communication should not have been a problem. Uh, there was a section on unacceptable levels of unprofessionalism. It should be unacceptable levels of professionalism, perhaps. Uh, the, stock, uh, the document states that I inadvertently supported others in agreeing to a second SRO. I actually wanted a second SRO, but the, critical, but the crucial point of why we needed one was being missed. My line of questioning was direct and actually brought out the critical information as to what the role of the SRO is and why a second one was needed. If I was abrupt, it was to stem off further irrelevant discussion and to cut to the facts and the need. Sometimes a firm, direct approach is needed, and in this case, I think it was warranted. Many of the concerns in this email dealt with the former police chief, and again, was a personnel issue that I won't discuss. In closing, I find that this group of concerned citizens has some points that can be considered, but they also have their own agenda as well. I will not stoop to unsavory actions and belittle individuals in a public forum. I do agree with the acknowledgments of the document that sitting on the town council can be a thankless job, and with each decision there will be those that disagree with those decisions. Indeed, even within the council, we have disagreements. I cannot speak for the other council members, but I can assure the citizens of Danville that I take the well-being of the town into account on all our decisions, except maybe the Blanton House. Some may not agree with those decisions, but that is the great thing about our country, that we can disagree, or even better yet, we can agree to disagree and still be civil to each other. Uh, this was not mentioned earlier, but I do want to throw it out that uh, tomorrow the citizens of Danville have a very important decision. Please go out and vote for the person or persons that you feel will best represent Danville. Good night and drive safe. Claim docket. Move to approve. Got a motion to approve the sec uh, the claim docket. Do I have a second? Second. I got a second. Further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed.
Claim docket is passed. Motion to adjourn. Well, we have to have the first. Oh. Would you like to make that motion? Chris made a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn, and I have a second. All those, any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Get out there.